Hi everyone, I'm Shauna Yao, CEO and Business and Personal Success Strategist at TotalGenius.net, where I help you discover your purpose, your genius, which is a combination of your expertise and life experience, and build it into a profit-generating business that's based on your purpose, so you can make money being yourself. Today I wanted to talk about something that is troubling a lot of people. And on the flip side, it's kind of fun. So I want to talk about how you can be the most fascinating person in the room. Why do you want to do this? Because, uh, you, because it attracts clients. The number one thing that people are looking for from you, besides what it is that you do, is that they're looking for authentic- authenticity. So I'm going to get into that a little more um, in a second. But, you know, the whole goal of attracting uh, your ideal clients and getting them to listen to you is to not make them feel like you're selling them. So I know this is like a whole conversation. I don't want to feel salesy. I don't want to. And the reality is, is you don't want to be salesy. So... First of all, I want to clarify that topic, is that you, as the authentic and, uh, and in true person that you are, you are not salesy. If you're worried about being salesy, you're, you're already not. So worrying about it will cause you to do things that may, may make you seem inauthentic, which would not be a good thing. The second thing is, is that, you know, in your business and in your marketing, you want to, um, to raise curiosity, not resistance. So you have a business and when people listen to you, you know, when you teach and when you write and all of that, the first thing that goes through people's minds, because we're all uh, ruled by our fear brain, so that's you, your ideal clients, everybody. We judge things based on uh, our fear brain which is judging, you know, should I eat you? Should I kill you? Should I mate with you? That's just a very primal reaction of our fear brain. And so uh, people are wary of of feeling sold to. And so rather than um, getting up there and teaching and doing the things that you do that may raise resistance, because naturally then people would be like, oh, no, you know, used car salesman, no. You want to raise curiosity. That's why you want to learn how to be the most fascinating person in the room. Because fascination is, means that there's something really interesting about you. And people will want to, to listen to you and learn from you and uh, tune into you. Uh, the second thing is, is uh, so I want to get back to, so the, the first thing that people want from you is authenticity. And while you may think, well, I'm authentic, in actuality, when, when you are, show up as 100% confident, that's what true authenticity is. That's how you actually communicate it. In fact, research shows that when you are truly authentic, this is kind of gross, but your, your mouth produces more saliva. I know, it's kind of gross, but... Your mouth produces more saliva, and so your words and the way that you speak sounds wetter. (laughs) I'm sorry, this is research, which is actually um, when people then hear that and pick that up, they can tell that you feel very confident, and that's how they judge your authenticity, through the sound of your voice and the way that you speak. So I hear many people say, you know, I don't feel confident on video. I don't, um, I don't know what to say. I, I don't know what to write. I don't know how to appear. And so I want to give you some tips on how to get over yourself and how to become the most fascinating person in the room because that's how you're going to attract people that are your tribe of loyal followers. These are people that I call your best business friends, your BBFs. I call them your BBFs over your ideal client, although sometimes I say your ideal client, because 
uh, I know, at least for me, as a purpose-driven entrepreneur, uh, I want to work with people I love. I don't just want to work with people that pay me money. Uh, in fact, I've, I've had people approach me that just want to pay me money. And if it's not a good fit, it's not a good fit. Um, so, you know, I am an authentic person through and through. And so, you know, that's how I run my business. And so you have to decide for yourself. But truly, you know, I, I would like for you to think of your ideal clients as BBFs because then it brings them into a more human place so that you can talk to them like your friends instead of thinking, um, you know, I did a video yesterday where I had a dollar bill in my head, instead of thinking about them as, um, as, a, as an income source because that just seems very vapid and it causes a lot of fear inside of you. So here are 15 things that you can do to, um, to become the most fascinating person in the room. And the first one is, it may seem obvious, but, um, but I think a lot of people would bypass this, but it's to create your own room. So if you have a group, a Facebook group, or like me doing Facebook Live, create the environment that you want to share yourself in. So I see a lot of people who think that their environment then is Facebook, like Facebook is the big global company it is. Um, to me, that's not your room. Facebook as a huge giant place is a huge giant place. And it's where a lot of bad things can happen inside your mind. There's, you know, there's in, in daily life, you know, you don't see the people who are making tons of money. You don't see the, the people who are, you know, um, raving about themselves. You don't see, like, you just don't see a lot of the things that, that you see on Facebook. And those things that you just see, some may apply to you, but most of it does not. And so what ends up happening to our fear-based brains is it causes a subconscious response that causes panic inside of us. Like, what's wrong with me? On, on bad days, like on good days, you must be like, oh yeah, you know, I love this. On bad days, and we all have them, it eats away at your self-confidence. And so uh, I'd like to say, you know, whenever you want to be on, you create your own room, create your own environment. You want to bring people to your house. You know, and your house is not just your website because, you know, that's in another town somewhere. <laughs> It, it, you need to create your house. So create your house on Facebook. So I'm doing a Facebook Live. Create your house on Facebook. Create a Facebook group. You know, find a place that you can invite people to. ABI should be written on your computer. What can I invite people to? What can I create to invite people to? I want to have a party. I want to ABI it to you. So, you know, it makes it kind of fun, but create your own room. Okay, no, I'm sorry, I have notes over here because I don't want to miss any of them, so I'm just going to keep looking over to the side. Uh, be known for your strengths. So for the people attending um, my position to sell free class on Thursday, right before, I'm gonna, or may, right before or right after, I'm going to send you a link to the How to Fascinate test uh, by Sally Hogshead. Um, I don't know if you've done it before, but I find that to be quite accurate. And that's how the world sees you. And she gives you two traits that you shine in. Mine are innovation and prestige. You know, for the life of me, all my life, my 48-year life, nobody could tell me those things, but everybody was like, you have this thing and you're able to put things together and you have all these ideas that nobody thinks of. Nobody could tell me what it was and it just boggled my mind until I took that test and I was like, whoa, that's pretty accurate. So knowing, you know, your strengths and how what other people think are your strengths really helps you uh, understand what it is and how you need to show up every day. So I know, like if I start talking about tactical things and like uh, details and things like that, I teach it, but when I talk about it, it's like, like people want to go to sleep. It's just, I, I am... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a very detail-oriented person, but I shine when I talk about big ideas and the human mind and, and big concepts. And some people think I'm really weird. <laughs> and 
you know, that used to bother me. But now that I know where I shine and to, to the, pe- the right people that can hear me, that's how I show up every day. And because of it, that's how I feel confident, which again, you know, that wetter thing and then you show up as authentic. Okay, so uh, next is, and I'm sorry I keep looking over to the, to the side. That's why I'm telling you that I have these notes over here. Um, uh, but the next thing is, is uh, become the most fascinating person to yourself. Become the most fascinating person to yourself. So that sounds a little like, you know, well, I'm so great. But in actuality, you are so great. And if you're not fascinating to yourself, you're never going to be able to put on a mask that's going to make you fascinating to other people. And so you want to become the most fascinating person in your room. Your personal brand is what people think about you when you're not in the room. The issue is, is that you are always in the room. Harlow, sorry. You are always in the room. You are your personal brand. And uh, if, if you do not find yourself entertaining, fascinating, you can't look at yourself and find the great parts to it, you need to do some deep work. Because becoming the most fascinating person to yourself is how you have self-confidence in yourself. It's not just about what other people think about you. The most important impression is the one you make on yourself. So I've given some tips in my past videos if you want to find them on my YouTube channel. But, you know, it starts with um, holding yourself up and, um, and sharing your knowledge and just doing so in a very bold way. You know, I like to practice, uh, this is how I've, I've built my confidence, <laughs> I like to pa- practice on helpless people. <laughs> I like to practice on helpless people who are behind a register at a store. And, you know, maybe it's just because I was a shopping center marketing director for so long, so I spent my life in in retail stores. But, you know, they're paid to pay attention to you, number one. Number two, they're human, too. So you want to, you know, share your inspiration, um, you know, tell them that they look great. You know, practice your confidence on uh, on people that, that don't feel like they matter. And you'll make them feel great, and you'll learn uh, what, you know, how, how to shine to yourself. Another thing, and this I highly recommend, whether you put it on YouTube or not, is to do a vlog. This like changed my life. And I wasn't sure if I was gonna actually put it on online, but it's on my YouTube channel. You know, I got a funny lens and I just, you know, I got a selfie stick and I just started filming myself talking about business and things like that um, because video kind of freaked me out and I don't like doing it. And every time I would try to do something for a YouTube channel, couldn't do it. I just freeze. And so uh, I found just talking into my phone and talking to myself, you know, because remember, you're the most fascinating person in the room. Um, I actually uncovered myself. I found that I was the most fascinating person in my room. And I found uh, what makes me come in- alive inside. And, the air- and then, you know, when I would listen to them, I found the areas that I know I need to position myself in my business about, around because those are the areas that I'm very strong in. You know, personal branding, talking about the mind and, and standing up for yourself, you know, kind of being a, a rebel uh, so that you can stand out to your BBFs. So whatever, you know, whatever that, whatever will come out of your mouth is going to be different. But it's kind of fun to do a vlog, and, uh, and, and whether you put it online or not, you'll just find out a lot about yourself and how you can become the most fascinating person to yourself. The third thing is, is to, um, to make eye contact. You know, when you're on video, when, uh, even when you're, okay, so this is kind of a weird concept, but even when you're posting, like on Facebook or Instagram, I want you to like pretend that there's another person on the other side not a million people. I want you to picture, you know, who it is that you're speaking to and what you want them to feel. Just pick one person, one person you already know that you want to impact and think about them when you write. That way then you're not just like broadcasting to the world. You're actually um, helping individuals, you know, absorb your information and the right people will hear you. 
uh, in addition to, you know, um, I just think that that's a great way to look at social media. It's, uh, it brings it to more of a human level rather than, um, uh, you know, a megaphone. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you, Lizzie. The next thing is, is uh, smile. So, you know, I have a, uh, I used to love my teeth, but um, because of my health condition and I'm in, I'm in pain a lot, I gr- I've ground my teeth front teeth down and they became kind of crooked. And so, you know, until I can get those fixed, uh, I, every time I look at myself, I really hate my smile. But quite honestly, you know, I'm the most fascinating person in the room. And so I like to smile. And so try to smile because smiling is appealing and it, um, it, it helps other people want to smile too. In fact, <laughs> this is kind of a funny thing, but uh, it's a human subconscious reaction that if you smile, the smile you send out will get returned to you, that in fact, you can't smile and not have somebody looking at you smile back. It's very weird, but you could try this on anybody. It's kind of, uh, me and my friend used to do this in high school. But you just walk around and like, you look at someone and then look at them in the eyes and then smile and you'll see that they smile back at you. This is kind of, that's kind of funny. Anyway, <laughs> um, laugh at yourself. I mean, literally, like when you mess up, when, when you make a mistake, even when you're by yourself, laugh at yourself. It's really not that bad. Even if it seems kind of bad, our bodies, in fact, so, you know, I, I've said this very openly, I have a, very, a kind of a severe health condition. And I find that even when I'm in pain and I can make myself like smile or, um, or laugh at myself, you know, like, ah, oh, I can't, it, it changes the way that your cells express themselves and the way that your mind thinks. Because it causes you to smile. And when you smile, you produce endorphins. And so, you know, especially when you make mistakes online, you know, people start judging yourself. So I'm not saying other people judge you, but you start judging yourself. Oh, I shouldn't have posted that. Oh my God, you know, I made a mistake. I can't believe I froze. Laugh at yourself. Because you know what? In a year, you're not going to remember that moment. And you might as well just uh, get in the habit of laughing at yourself because then you'll get through your failures and mistakes so much easier and you'll find that then, um, you know, it just becomes fun. Then, so I know a lot of people are afraid to try things. You're afraid of failure. Failure becomes an experiment. Life is an experiment. Business is an experiment. Every program you launch is not going to be successful. You may, you know, stumble and fall. You may make mistakes. People may judge you. Um, laugh at yourself. It, it's, the other option is you can sit and beat yourself up and overthink it. So I like to look at it in two ways. You can either laugh at yourself or you can sit and judge yourself, overthink, and then beat yourself up and then, um, you know, fall into depression. Which would you rather? <laughs> okay, I don't know what number I'm on, but uh, let's see. Oh, this is such a good one for us women. Be vain. Okay, I'm going to shock you in a second. Women spend over 20 years, years of your life having bad hair hair days. I'm having a bad hair day because I'm launching this program and I haven't had time to go get my hair colored. But um, uh, spend money on yourself and be vain because anything that you can do as superficial as it seems, to make yourself feel better about yourself, then you can stop judging yourself. And remember, confidence sells. And so anything you can do to make you feel confident. You know, in fact, I got this microphone. I got, you know, one of those like bald microphones uh, and some lighting. Not just because they're a microphone and it improves the sound and because it's lighting, but because it makes me feel professional. Do I act professional? I don't know. I mean, you can see my bra and like, (laughs) but I know I'm intelligent and I know, uh, I know what I'm doing. And so, you know, these other added things that make me feel confident, it was worth an investment to me. Okay. So, um, let's see, wait, uh, oh, such an important one. Unfollow people who make you feel bad. 
So, you know, I did a business detox um, a couple weeks ago. I wrote a, a whole post about the Facebook flu. But uh, people, um, and they, they're not doing this on purpose. It's just that, you know, our judgmental brains are always comparing ourselves against others. If you are following somebody who, you know, you admire so much or who you think is going to elevate your status by following them, yet uh, deep inside they kind of make you feel bad, unfollow them. And if, if you're not so brave to unfollow them, just try taking like the following thing off on your Facebook and you'll find if you do these other things, you become the most fascinating person to yourself, you know, work on your own thing, you'll find uh, you forget them and you'll find a new confidence emerging. So I see a lot of people and I've talked to a lot of people who say, you know, oh, I, I you know, I want to learn from X because uh, then I'm going to elevate my own status. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to, if you surround yourself with people that lift you higher, you know, you'll become higher. And that, that applies to a certain extent. But, you know, when it turns into um, you're drowning in their shadow, not because of them, but because of your own mind, you need to unfollow them. Because the reality is they don't go home with you at night. They don't check your bank account. And um, they don't lay their head on your pillow. And so, you know, whatever you need to do to make um, your life great, then you need to do that to make your life great. That doesn't say anything against anybody. It's just, you know, you need to do things that are right for you. Um, invest in yourself. Whether you're spending money on coaching, you know, improving yourself, you know, being vain. If you can spend money on yourself to grow yourself in some way, improve your self-image, uh, improve your brain, improve your business, to make money, to improve your health, whatever it is, you know, um, I used to be a shopaholic and uh, now I really, I view money and happiness in a whole different way. So understand that at the end of your life, you're not going to say, you know, well, I wish I had, you know, a better car. You're going to say, you know, you wish you were or did or had the courage to. So whatever helps you do that, then uh, it's worth spending money for. It's an investment in yourself and in your health and in your, you know, in who you are as a person. Uh, okay, so be assertive. So, you know, I'd like to, um, I'd like to just separate the word bitchy from assertive. Because I know many people are like, you're afraid to offend other people. You can't judge how other people are going to take it in, number one. And number two, as long as you are coming from a place of helping other people, speaking your mind is very important, not just for yourself, but for the other person. I can't tell you how many people thank me for kicking them in the ass. <laughs> My clients tell me that. Because sometimes you need somebody to push you up. You can't have cheerleaders around you all the time. And especially as a business person who's there to help people, you actually need to really help them. And you can't help them by saying they're great all the time. That's called a yes person. And, um, you know, to me, that's not uh, what an authentic uh, entrepreneur should do in the best interest of other people. So, you know, being assertive means you speak your mind. And on the other side, you ask for what you want. This is not being demanding. This is not saying your needs are more important than other people. This is just about being assertive. You know, if you have a thought, people pleasing is actually, you know, not a nice thing. In fact, um, people pleasers cause a lot of problems because what ends up happening is that inside of you, you end up like building up a lot of hate or like, you know, um, disdain for the other person. And somewhere, sometime in the future, it's going to come out and the other person's going to be like, what the hell? What just happened? <laughs> so, you know, speak your mind and be assertive. That's a, that's a positive quality of a fascinating person. Okay, the next thing is uh, focus on energy rather than your appearance. So, you know, like I just told you about my teeth 
or you know you may have something uh, about you that that um, that you don't like so you're starting to judge yourself focus on your energy because you know there's an energy of success and when you become the most fascinating person to yourself you have that energy so you don't care what you look like you know I mean am I the prettiest person in the world no <laughs> but you know um, to me, that doesn't really matter because I'm speaking my genius and I'm very, you know, I, I'm very proud of uh, my knowledge and my ability to share with other people. And so, you know, uh, whatever it is for you, focus on that, not, uh, not personally judging yourself, especially on live video. Uh, be transparent, but a little mysterious. So I'm a very honest, open person, and I will speak my mind, you know, up and down. Uh, but you have to hold some things back, not because, you know, you're like holding something back and being devious. It's just that you want to be a little mysterious, so people want to get to know you. That's about, you know, the raising curiosity. When you are the most fascinating person in the room and you know your strengths, you're able to then, you know, speak about all your genius, but you're also able to know, you know, the true value inside of you. And people can't experience that until, you know, they take a step closer. So, you know, be transparent, be open, be honest, be assertive, and understand, you know, your higher value and reserve that for, you know, your clients. Uh, let's see. Ask the right questions. You know, all my life, people have told me that I ask a lot of questions. And uh, asking a lot of questions will get you the right answers. And so, you know, asking strategic questions that uh, not only moves your clients forward, but yourself. You know, uh, instead of, you know, beating yourself up or, or saying things like, you know, what am I going to do? Oh my God, what am I going to do? Uh, you need to ask yourself, you know, why is this happening? What can I do about it? Uh, what are my options? Um, you want to ask other people, you know, uh, what do you need? How can I help you? Don't assume anything, number one. And number two, be curious. You want to be curious. You can't assume that you're out there to help everybody. And, um, and in order to be the most fascinating person in the room, you want other people to talk about themselves. You want to open up the conversation. You want to engage other people. In order to be the most fascinating person in the room, you actually have to be fascinated by other people. Or, I mean, yes, wait. you have, actually have to make other people um, let's see, wait, how am I thinking about this? <laughs> you have to, uh, uh, be the most fascinating person to yourself and then help other people, um, speak about what's fascinating about them. That's what I want to say. So you want to ask questions and always know when you're asking questions to yourself that there is a solution. So you don't have to get desperate. You don't have to, you know, the solution could be doing nothing and waiting, but you need to um, just keep asking questions until you come to a solution that feels good for you. And you know that's how you stop the overthinking and the judging and can focus on the fascination. The number one thing that you can do to become the most fascinating person in the room is to know your why, to know your true purpose. To know why you're here, why you have a business, why you, you need to speak. What is it that you're going to say? You know, what could you scream from the mountaintops? Because when you know your why, all of those other things come together. You can't help but become the most fascinating person to yourself. You know why? Because you become obsessed with this thing. It lives inside of each and every one of us, that unique purpose. When you find it, there's nothing that can hold you down. 
then you stop judging yourself. You just start doing. You start, you know, you want to scream this from the mountaintops. And, and honestly, you know, this is why I'm having that class positioned uh, to sell on Thursday. Why I have the seven-day position to sell challenge and why I'm presenting a new hybrid mentorship program. Because that one thing, you know, when you discover your purpose, then you have a, you totally understand, like, it's like you, it shoots you up from where you are now to where you're supposed to be. But in order to make that run correctly so that you can actually make money and have a system that works and not fall victim to your mind, you know, social media and all of that, you have to have a system that supports it. It literally will work like clockwork. You know, life's supposed to happen for us, and it does when you know the system that it takes. When you know that internal fire inside of you, and then you have the pieces together that support it so that you can just focus on your purpose, that's when it works. So, you know, uh, I, I missed this part in the beginning, but there are 10 million bits of information going on at any moment, like any millisecond in time. Yet we humans can only recognize 40. So if you're so focused on trying to be fascinating, trying to do these things, trying to, um, you know, to get clients, trying to make money, if you're so focused on those external things, then you can't be the most fascinating person in the room because you're, we can only focus on 40 bits of information. So, um, you know, you can't control how you appear. You can't control that wet sound in your confident voice. You can't control, um, you know, all the things that I just mentioned. Instead, you need to focus on, you know, your genius, your why, your mission. And then you, when you speak that and then you have the system doing all of the other work for you, it just works. That's the way a successful business runs. You don't need to go learn how to build a list and learn how to do all those things. That needs to be there, but that's not what you need to focus on. You need to focus on uh, making yourself the most fascinating person in the room so that you can attract the people to you and then have a system that supports it. So I hope you'll show up to the free class on Thursday. It's at positioned.totalgenius.net. And there's a seven-day challenge that you know, I can't recommend you enough participate in it and actually participate in the group because otherwise, you know, I can't help you through it. And that's actually where a lot of the growth happens. And, uh, you know, come join the Genius Collective because uh, to me, that's the most fascinating place in town. And I hope that you have a great night and I'll talk to you all later. Bye.